Hello, welcome to Mel on the Street. I'm Mel Schaefer and today we're at the Toronto Money Show and I'm joined by Kim Bolton, Founder, CEO and Portfolio Manager at Black Swan Dexteritis. Thanks for joining us today, Kim. Thanks, Mel. Um, the market so far in September, the first 10 days were the fifth worst in over 25 years. Um, but since then, we've seen a huge rebound up almost back to the all time highs. What's driving the price action? Well, what's this? this is Friday, so I guess it was back on uh, Monday or Tuesday and Jensen Hang from NVIDIA, I guess it was on Tuesday that he was uh, giving a speech at one of the conferences and he just sort of was very calm and said that the production was fine, the demand was huge and it just sort of settled the market down. I really think that's what it sort of took because they're the king of AI and that's where it is these days. Yeah, so speaking of NVIDIA, that, that earnings season, they just sort of wrapped up the earnings season. And we're only about a month away from probably Netflix and Tesla being the next big tech um, companies to report. What do you think we're gonna see from the next set of big tech earnings from their earnings and for their guidance into 2025? For the market as a whole? Yeah, what's it gonna show? What's it gonna show investors? Well, let's see. the. Uh, the second quarter, overall, if you, if you sort of look at the NASDAQ and the, and the S&P, they had growth of around 11, 12 percent. Uh, they're expecting going into the Q3 to be at more sort of 13, 14 percent. Looking beyond that, who knows? <laughs> um, and of course, there's a lot of macro stuff that is floating around in the in the background that is very much coming to the foreground. Um, so you know, earnings earnings are not a problem. Certainly this year, and probably going into the first half of 2025. But beyond that, it's pretty difficult to call it based on you know what interest rates are going to do and the central banks, um, and then a lot of the macro information that comes up. What um, companies do you see as the strongest going into the end of this year? Actually, I guess, it, you know, without a doubt, it has to be sort of the whole AI ecosystem, which is massive, which is just absolutely massive. So we've really spent the better part of two years building the foundation and the infrastructure, you know, all the way from the power grid into you know the cloud, um, the hyperscalers, the communication companies, and of course the semiconductors. You know all the way from the manufacturers to the foundries to to the designers. Um, and you know the market participants are always impatient, right? Um, so you got to get the foundation to be able to actually do this massive amount of data processing. Here's the question. And I think going into 20, end of this year, 2025, that's when the model training, which is basically a lot of the, the data centers and the hyperscalers, you know, the Amazons and, and uh, Google and Oracle, uh, Microsoft. So um, they have their own model training and it's starting to grow and, and they're learning a lot. Once, once the, uh, the model training is in full bloom, that is when, I think, that is when the uh, application players out there. So, you know, in the, I, I guess what I'm saying in the first half of uh, 2025, look for the model training that is coming out of the big hi hyperscalers. Um, and then the second half of 2025, that should be when the application players, you know, all the way from like Adobe to ServiceNow and Salesforce, right? They're the ones that are actually going to bring it to life for you and I, right? And for yep. us to actually use it. Um, but it just takes a while, right, to, to, to get everything in place. So where in within the AI cycle do you think we are? Are we sort of in the middle of it right now? And then what might be the next big innovation that sort of starts to drive the tech sector. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it's a baseball game, I think we're only in second or third inning. Okay. It's really early. 
Um, it's just the next big thing is going to be the model train. Right. So they, they have the data, they have the processing capabilities with all the accelerators um, and the packaging that is uh, when the video is done. Um, and other people will, will copy it, what NVIDIA has done, but um, to me, the next big thing is where the model trade, model training for like all of the data is possible with things like uh, Llama from Facebook, uh, Gemini from, uh, from Google, Microsoft is, is gonna be a big player in that. Um, but I think actually when it comes to the model training, um, people are going to be impatient. And so I think you'll see some of the models actually geared to, to specific industries like healthcare right. or, or into entertainment, right? Um, all the way like in entertainment, like Netflix should be a huge winner out of this um, because they'll be able to use the model training to actually make it easier for you and I to find what we really want to watch, right? Right. Likewise, um, uh, look at the game. You know, uh, Microsoft, pretty smart. The Dell is very smart in, in actually acquiring uh, Activision Blizzard. Right. Um, and now, putting over top of that, um, the model training, um, that is just going to excel the whole gaming side of things. Um, but then, you know, there, there are some... Um, industrial, I guess, like healthcare is going to be huge. Yeah. Um, so it could be very, the model training, I think, at first will be the uh, specific to industries and specific to companies in that industry that, that actually have the deep pockets to be able to, to weather the storm and then time to actually spend all this money. Yeah, and I mean, it gives the entertainment uh, industry especially a way to use AI that isn't deep fakes and creating, yeah, like, you know, putting yeah. the, the writers out of business, yeah, yeah. et cetera. Um, NVIDIA has been an extremely popular stock for retail traders um, and institutions as well. Do you have three stocks that you're particularly bullish on going into the end of this year or even into the first quarter, second quarter of 2025? Well, I could go on and on. <laughs> um, but actually... You're right. Nvidia is is all the talk out there. Yeah. However, if you look at the uh, the mutual funds, very very underweight in Nvidia. Okay. Um, they like the diversification, and they've sort of miss they're missing the boat. Um, right. I still think, you know, if if I were, if I were to pick out sort of three or four stocks, right? Yep. Number one. You have to own the hyperscalers because the hyperscalers are the cloud guys that they're also do the model trade, which is key to actually getting it over into the applications. Um, so you have to, much the same as you have to own NVIDIA, you have to own Microsoft and Google and, and Meta. Um, the, the other, the second area that I think is pretty key even though it's had a good run, you know, the whole power grid, yeah. um, which is the utilities, okay. which are usually the ones that, you know, are sort of behind the curtain and they don't yeah. do all that great. You know, I, I, the power grid is up 20% plus. But a lot of those companies like Duke and PPL um, are now breaking new highs, historic highs. Hold on. So I think that's going to run. And a lot of the of the participants are under weight on the power grid. And then the third area that I think, and it's, and it's a bit beaten down, are any of the members within that IGV ETF, which is the, the software ETF, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the kings of that, that will do very well, even though like Adobe reported yesterday and they lowered their guidance. Um, but that's just for the next quarter. I think a year from now, Adobe will, will just be absolutely fun. Uh, Salesforce will do well. Service now will do uh, extremely well. So yeah, the, you know, those three areas of the hyperscalers, the power grid, um, and then the application providers. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been awesome. Enjoy the conference. Thanks a lot.